good morning and welcome to One Tourism World, the convergence point and the global hub for pioneers, entrepreneurs, and visionaries from the global tourism and hospitality sectors. We bring to you an exciting platform featuring distinguished leaders ready to share their groundbreaking ideas on cutting edge topics that are revolutionizing the industry. Our experts come from the diverse fields, including luxury hospitality, ecotourism, digital transformation, and more. And all are set to unravel the latest in industry developments for you. One Tourism World is a vibrant community that encourages collaboration and open dialogue to catalyze, catalyze positive changes within the tourism and hospitality sectors. Please join us on this discovery and a journey of innovation and growth. Let us shape the future of the industry together here at One Tourism World. This morning, we're joined um, by my co-host, Bertrand Pettit from Monaco, as well as we're very happy to welcome to the platform, Colin Hughes. He's the Director of Experience for Onboard Revenue at Virgin Voyages. Bertrand, let me hand it off over to you to get to get started and to uh, further introduce Colin. Welcome, gentlemen. Hey. Excellent, great. And thank you very much, Glenn. And uh, what a pleasure to do another one of those videos with you. <laughs> I think we're, we're becoming best buddies in doing that. And uh, well, before I introduce or as a way to introduce our, our guest today, I would like to tell you a little bit of a story. Imagine that you have to launch a new cruise line. And that's already, believe me, it's already very, very difficult. Now, imagine in addition to that, to make it even more difficult that you have to launch a new cruise line, but that in the process of doing so, you want to also change the way people, people cruise. You want to create a product that doesn't exist. You want to create a product that will change the game in so many ways, both for guests, but also, and we'll get to talk about it today with our guests, for crew members. So already you have a very difficult task ahead of you, right? Now, because it's not difficult enough, imagine you do all of that right in the middle of the pandemic. Well, this is exactly what happened with Virgin voyages. They had a plan to launch a cruise line. Obviously, they did not know about the pandemic, but the timing was so that the first ship was ready right in the midst of the pandemic. So they had to still get things into motion, understanding the environment, what was going on, and not knowing exactly when this was going to end and how to adjust their plans. Thankfully, <laughs> they were smart enough to hire uh, very experienced executives from the cruise industry. And we're very lucky today to have one of them with us today. So I'm very happy and very honored to welcome Colin Hughes, uh, who is in charge of onboard experiences and revenue for Virgin Voyages. And Colin comes with a wealth of experience in the cruise industry. He'll tell us a, a little bit about this. And today we want to talk about, well, how Virgin Voyages transforms the cruise industry. And the experience of going through such an exciting launch at such an exciting time, because let's face it, today is an exciting time for the cruise industry. So Colin, welcome to One Tourism World, to this webinar from One Business World. And uh, if maybe in a few words, you can introduce yourself, tell us about your life, tell us a little bit about your background. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for the beautiful introduction, Bertrand and Glenn. Um, so <clears throat> how did it all start in cruise ships? Uh, for me, I was 18 in Manchester, in England, and I was uh, in a break room. I heard uh, some people talking about going working, coming back from working in the Bahamas and working in the Caribbean. So that starts my journey. I was like, how how do I do that? You know, um, that sounds a much better life than, you know, rainy uh, in Manchester at that time. <laughs> um, so I looked and I, I checked the websites and read for jobs and I found an opportunity in London to, to go for an interview for Caribbean. I went to London um, and they informed me that um, come back when you're 21 because, you know, they prefer people at that age when you come to work in the United States. So I went back when I was 20. <laughs> I went for another interview and I joined my first cruise ship on my 21st birthday, um, you know, back in 1996. I'll give my age away. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where, like, you know, my passion for the cruise industry uh, started. 
So go five more years. And then I met my uh, beautiful wife in New York in 2001. Uh, she's from um, South Africa. We traveled the world for 11 years. Most of the time on the ships, uh, I covered all the onboard revenue areas, casinos, spa, um, retail. And then the opportunity came uh, for a job in uh, Miami. So I thought, okay, that's always been my dream to go and work in America. So then I, I moved to America in 2012. And then um, it was amazing. You know, it was a little bit of a different transition from moving from a ship, um, working with front of house, all of the sailors, to working back of house. It's a big transition because you're working with thousands of people and now you're working with hundreds of people. Um, so it's really a, a big transition. It's a shock to your system at first. And it's good to have uh, good support systems around you uh, to make so, make sure you have the tools um, to be successful. And then we had uh, a baby boy in 2015, one of our uh, proudest uh, moments. And then in 2018, I'd worked for 22 years for, for the same company. Um, had a lot of passion for them. Um, learned a lot. And then Virgin Voyages was making a lot of noise in the industry. And I was very fortunate to get an opportunity to go for an interview. And it was interesting, um, this process, because the the, the process was, um, you uh, at the time I was going for, for, for a senior manager role and um, I kept meeting with uh, the VPs. And now these VPs, uh, Nirmal is the CEO of Virgin Voyages. And I'm wondering why am I meeting with all these senior leaderships? I'm only going for like, you know, a senior manager role. And then I thought I'd got the, the job and then basically they they said, um, you need to go now with the, the CEO. So I said, okay. So we went for the CEO and they basically asked like, what do you think of the experience so far? And I really wanted the job. I, I promise I really did want the job, but their experience um, at that time um, didn't look 100% to me. So I was honest and I said, you know, I think uh, maybe you should do little tweaks here and there. And then I thought I'd never get the job because I did really say uh, the experience was great. But Virgin loved that, that you, you had a voice and you were a leader at the time and you spoke up. And then everybody, um, how can you say, it? everybody gets rewarded from that because we're all, we're, everyone's a leader uh, where we are, our company. So that was really interesting. And then in uh, 2019, I became a United States uh, uh, citizen. And so we'll talk more about Virgin as we go along, but that's my story. It's like the true American uh, dream. You know, I came from Manchester. Now I'm living in America. I met my wife in New York. I mean, it's really uh, fun. And what I tell, when, when I work with my teams, all, like, all my teams know that, like, never bring a problem to a meeting. Always bring um, a solution. And as long as you love what you do, that's all that matters, as long as you have a balance with your family. And that's what all our teams strive for. So that's me in a nutshell. So thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Bertrand. Well, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a beautiful story. And, and uh, it shows again how the cruise industry, the tourism industry in general, but specifically the cruise industry, allows us to not only leave our passion, but also, yes, like you said yourself, you know, move from a country, a rainy country, there's nothing wrong about the UK, <laughs> but <laughs> and, and go to, to a place of your dream, whether it's uh, Florida or anywhere else. So it, it allows you to make choices. And that's, that's the important thing. So congratulations on this, on this wonderful career and, uh, and, and, and a beautiful, beautiful uh, introduction. Thank you, thank you, Colin. Colin, I remember the, the first time, and, and I think you mentioned it was 2018, so I believe that it was about that time. The first time I saw the drawing or the renderings at that time of the future uh, Virgin Voyages ships, uh, my, my first reaction is, wow, they look nothing like anything that exists. You know, it was so, uh, so innovative in, in the exterior design. You know, we're not even going into the product itself, but just the exterior design. Tell us a little bit about uh, the, the, the innovation, the process of creating something that would completely transform the industry, something that doesn't exist. Let's talk first about, for the guests, we'll talk about the crew later on, but 
what did you want to create? What did you, how did you want to make sure that Virgin Voyages has an impact? And I know I'm going to just hint on something that also struck me, not just about the exterior design of the vessels, but also about your name, the name of the, the, the line. From the very beginning, you know, the cruise industry, all, almost all the cruise lines are called something cruises, something cruise line. And from the get-go, Virgin Voyages say, no, we don't want to use the word cruises. And that's why they chose the word voyages. So even in the branding itself, they intended to show that, guys, we are not going to do something that currently exists. So tell us a little bit about that process of innovation. What's very interesting about Virgin is that, um, you know, respect to all the cruise industries, but um, basically when you work in the cruise industry, 90% of people is from that industry. Um, with Virgin, we had 30% of people from the Virgin brand. Um, we had 30% of people from experts at the cruise cruise world. And then we had 30% 30, 30 of people from, from brands that have innovated, you know, the world. Um, and then we had like 10% of like consultants who would come in um, and pitch, you know, different ideas, different stories. But what was interesting, you had like a, let's call it a magic circle. And you would present your idea um, and then that idea had to be signed off by design, by marine, uh, by hotel. Uh, it was very interesting. And sometimes you had to come back three or four times. And Richard Branson's always, you know, the big thing is always say yes. And I'm fortunate to get a yes in every one of my meetings. Um, so I'm very proud about that. Uh, um, <clears throat> but it's, a, it's an interesting process. And sometimes it's long and uh, sometimes uh, you get frustrated by it, but wonderful things happen uh, through this process and you learn so much um, because you're an expert, you know the details of your area, but you don't know the questions and answers of every, everyone else's areas. So they really look at um, everything end to end. That, that, that's fascinating, Colin. Tell, tell us a little bit about what in that process, what worked well and what did you learn along the way? What were maybe some of the, not failures, but things that could do some little work? Yeah, I think um, we had amazing, we, well, like our ship is designed like a yacht, you know, mm -hmm. and um, basically we have these uh, little, uh, like beautiful areas all over the ship. But I think it, it worked. Um, when we get in, like now we get up to say 2,400 sailors, 2,500 sailors. Now we really have to manage, uh, like making sure that everyone has an experience to do. Everybody has somewhere to, to eat. Everybody has a, a show. So this is like when we thought about it, um, I think we're learning now that we have to tweak some of the beginning experiences uh, that we mm -hmm. thought how it would play out. Mm -hmm. But um, in the real world, we had to make some tweaks to, we call it like our playbooks because, yeah. um, and, and we learn a lot. So we're very passionate about, you know, ideas. And um, sometimes we're like, no, this is how it's supposed to happen. But I think sometimes you have to be very humble and say, it's just not going to work when you have, this amount of uh, sailors on board and that we have to change the experience so that everybody enjoys it and it's not really something that you wouldn't go back to do yeah true and, and i know that for example virgin voyages was at the forefront of changing some some of the some of the things that are so ingrained into the cruise industry such as you know you have a main restaurant well there's no main restaurant on your ships you, know, you have a buffet where there's no buffet as such you know there's a bit of a different concept but so you you met, you you really took the, the cruise product and in a sense turn it around and say okay well let's see how how we can recreate everything T tell us a little bit about the um, i'm curious about the entertainment uh, you or the atmosphere what did you want to create on board what was your target market what what is the entertainment what is the onboard atmosphere that you wanted to create entertainment is is is, is very interesting I mean, um, Richard Kilman does an amazing job with his team. But basically, when you look at a theater on a cruise ship, it's only used like three or four times a day. And then it's a, it's a ghost space. You know, no, no one uses it. So what Virgin decided to do was um, 
to basically uh, challenge uh, our design team to make it three different um, spaces. So one space where it's like a nightclub scene where all of the seating is retracted back into the walls. Um, and then there was another one where it's all the seating is out. So you're forward facing like a normal theater show. And then we wanted to create um, another show where basically you have two sides where you have the show in the middle. And we want to create a lot of immersive shows so that you can feel like you're part of the show. So the sailor's choice, we call the guest sailors. The sailors want to be close and up front, like we have the show called Dual Reality. It's similar to like a Cirque du Soleil. It's very immersive. It's very in front of you. If you want to be part of the show, you can go to the front. If you just want to watch it, you can go to the back. So um, we've done it. And then we do a little thing called surprise and delights. So you could be having a nice glass of champagne and a sip lounge or by the pool. And we'll do some kind of unique entertainment that you might not see uh, anywhere um, out there at sea. So Virgin's always innovating. And we're doing, we do have different, we have, a, we have a, a different shows on different ships so that if you want to try, you know, different itineraries, it's very interesting. So that's how the entertainment is. I mean, you really have to come on and see it. I can't really explain it in words. Yeah, you have to you have to come on board and and experience it. You're right, and it's uh, but I like I like your description of it, which is immersive in a sense, and it's it's not just uh, you were very very right when you say you know cruise ship they have this theater which is only use your right you know on a few hours at most every day and what a waste in the sense of real estate on board a cruise ship right so imagining how to use that space in a smarter way was uh was was genius was was pure genius uh it, it, glenn have you what do you know a little bit about about virgin or have you uh looked a little bit well i know you know the branding is always world famous right and everything richard branson does you know he does he's all in right he's all in so why why wouldn't he do this for for the for 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 the cruise industry and and just the little touches like you said the fact that you call it voyages okay. it kind of underscores that this is a journey it's about the experience it's about the and and you think of other words like journey like uh, crossing we used to talk about you know from from new york to england right and it's really all about that and i i love the fact that the guest is considered a sailor what a fascinating way to, to, to view it because they're on the journey too, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's another reason why we changed it from cruise to, to voyage. Um, and at the beginning, we were going to have uh, children on board. And then we decided, you know what, there's a, there's a, there's a young adults could be um, out there. And I mean, no, I'm saying there's a brand for adults only because a lot of... Um, People like myself, I would leave my child with a family member or someone um, I trusted, go on a cruise and you'd be or a voyage and you'd be voyaging with everyone else's kids. So, so now we have a brand that you know you can really get a, get away from all of that, and people love that, even people with children. You know the fact the fact that as, as you started out that that when when the company was forming, the fact that you didn't just pick industry people, you obviously had experts in that spot, but you 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 had your traditional virgin executives who are obviously brand conscious. You had other worldwide branding people as part of that, you know, as part of that as part of that makeup, you know, as well as as well as industry consultants coming back and, and giving you the ideas. Because I mean, as you said, it's always important don't don't bring necessarily a problem to the meeting. Come come with solutions. And when you've got a mix of, of people in your 100% like that, you're going to get a lot of solutions. Yeah, it's, it is. I mean, and, and come with the best solution with the, the tools you have at the time, you know, and what's your, and then you can also plan for the future roadmap as well. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, on your, on your side, just for the, we mentioned, we mentioned the crew a little bit. How, how about, how about from, um, uh, from a traditional crew, you think of you think of the industry in and of itself, and now here here you're here you're crewing your vessels here for these for these Virgin voyages. How much crew tweaking had to happen? How much retraining of the crew? Their their kind of experience uh, mm -hmm. as they became part of that 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 brand as well. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's very interesting here because normally you go with twenty percent of the new hires, and then you have eighty percent of seasoned crew members. 
so that you can teach them and and then the experience nobody even knows that you have new hires on board because you always have somebody holding their hand but we had to have everyone holding each of us hands because <laughs> everything was brand new to us and we were learning um together so so what we did is we went on a round the world tour uh, looking for uh, the right crew with the right personality we had the skills um but what we were looking for was someone who was passionate um, and it doesn't matter. Like sometimes in the cruise industry, they they might look at you. Okay, you have a tattoo. Okay, um, you don't look right to us. All we did was, if you have the right personality, and you're passionate about what you do, then we'll give you an opportunity to come and show us who you are. Because it's really hard in an interview to find out who the real person is. Um, and then when you come on board, we gave them a lot of benefits. Because if you're not happy as a crew member, then you have nothing. Everyone can spend billions of dollars on ships, but if you don't have the right crew, you have you have nothing. Uh, so basically, we gave uh, free internet, um, which is another thing that Virgin does. It, it kind of like disrupts the industry. Um, so that was another interesting time to, to join this company. So now um, we gave them free internet, which has never been done before, uh, which was great. The crew uh, loved that. We gave them small things like, um, because we're a sustainability company, we didn't want to sell like plastic bottles all the time. So we put water machines everywhere and we gave them all, uh, you know, the, the cups that they could fill. So now they get free water. They don't have to pay for the water. Uh, we gave them soda. We gave them coffee. Uh, and basically this would save some crew members up to three, four dollars um, a month. Um, and then... Uh, when I joined ships back in 1996, there was, I mean, and everyone's changing now, but you had like a, a, a crew mess and an officer's mess and a staff mess and the crew could never venture out in, into front of house. to, Very to discriminated. Mix, <laughs> yeah, to mix with the sailors. But what we did in Virgin, we have like a, a kitchen table, it's called. <clears throat> and you can have crew members all the way up to the captain. And we all eat there. It's the same food as what the sailors eating. It's like eating with your family, <clears throat> and it's really nice. I mean, they, uh, they've they done a really great job there. Uh, and then what we do is, because we had to accelerate our crew knowledge, we let um, all of our crew, when when we can, we don't, obviously we've got to run the business, but when we can, when we have opportunities, we let them go and eat at, the, at our restaurants, uh, we let them go and see our shows. So basically when uh, the sailors come on and they ask questions, we just accelerated our crew knowledge by at least uh, six months because they've experienced the show. They know what to talk about to the sailor. They've experienced the food um, and the, they know the areas like the gyms, all this stuff. So it really helped accelerate uh, our crew. And it's interesting because we had some sailors who loved it uh, who loved to be able to see that the crew had a life outside of working all the time on the ship. And there were some sailors that were saying, why are they taking my space at the dinner and the restaurant? Why are they taking my space in the show? So, you know, we're looking for solutions to make everyone happy. Yeah, but it's interesting that you bring, and, and thank you, Glenn, for bringing the crew, because you're right, in the cruise industry, traditionally, the crew is very separated from the guests, right? It's, it's you, you seldom, I mean, yes, of course, you have those crew members that have the ability and opportunity to go in public areas, but some crew members almost never see those areas, and and it's very segregated behind behind the behind the walls very high quality i mean it's not you know a slave ship by any means today you have strict regulations but you're right you know there's an officer's mess there's a um, there's a, a crew mess and, and the fact that you create this space and you you sort of equalize everybody and 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 even sort of eradicate the difference between guests and crew because we're all on the same ship at the same time right doing a voyage you know and, and i think uh, virgin voyages was was instrumental in, in doing that and you know every success story is being copied right so you know very many cruise lines today Colin and I think you will agree are sort of following that trend you, you mentioned uh, free internet uh, you know internet on, on the ship is extremely expensive because it goes through satellite and so on so it is an expensive uh, topic and it, it was it's traditionally charged to guests and charged to crew right today 
in our world, uh, internet is a given. You know, if I go on the street, if I go in a cafe, if I go in a shop, I expect to be able to, to connect uh, free to internet. So going on a ship and having to pay for it is also something that, you know, it's sort of, wait, you know, I make the commitment to be away from my family, my friends, my, you know, all the people at home for several months, and I need to be able to connect with them. That's, that's, a, that's a basic today. And I think Virgin Voyages was instrumental in understanding that, understanding that it's not just about the money, but that there are other benefits, such as internet, such as, you know, the ability to explore the ship and to enjoy the ship at the same time, that, that are key to the crew welfare on board ships. And I think changing the change industry, not just for the guests, but also for the crew, they are being copied now, you know, many cruise lines do the same, but you know, that's a tribute to, to your work, Colleen, <laughs> in a sense. Mm. And we even give the free internet to the sailor as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, that's a yeah. industry first. I mean, we we understand that our sailors need to be connected to their business or to their family members. For the same and reason. a lot of people didn't want to pay the, the the prices, so we gave it to them. As it's basically we put everything all inclusive. So yeah. instead of you coming on and um, you've got to pay for this, pay for this, pay for that. We put the tips are included. Your your dining. We don't have a dining room, and we don't have specialty restaurants. So we we're going to give you restaurants, and we're going to have all that included. So when you come, all you got to pay for is like your retail, your drinks, and your show fees. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting. No yeah. asterisks. No asterisks as to to <laughs> as to, as, as to add-ons, right? No food exactly. no in the contract. <laughs> But, but is, this is also expected today. People want clarity, want simplicity in a sense. You know, they want transparency in the way you deal with, well, in that sense, your your uh, cruise line. Sorry, Glenn, you were going to say something. No, I just it it just what Colin said. It just underscores with, with with the crew. It underscores the immersion experience, right? And and you think about you think of hospitality in a general sense, right? And you go to a restaurant, you go. Um, you go to a show and you ask someone, well, what do you recommend? And wouldn't it be really interesting for the crew to come back and say, well, you know, when I saw the show, <laughs> I thought it was, you know, really what, what a, what a great endorsement, right? Or how oh, I soup of the day. Oh, my favorite is when we do, you know, tomato basil or, or whatever the case may be. And the fact that the crew could actually tell the sailor that it comes from, you know, and if you're the sailor, Right to come back as the guest and say, "Wow, this is this is really fascinating." They're they, they are experts because they're experiencing what I'm experiencing, and and in a way, their recommendation comes even more highly valued than I think. Much more genuine in so in so many ways, right? Colin, uh, well, since well, you mentioned you started in the cruise industry in '96, right? Uh, so you probably have a wealth of experience. You do have a wealth of experience. Tell tell us a little bit. If you were to speak to people that are considering a career in the in this industry, in the tourism industry at large, right? Tell us a little bit about what you learn, things that you learn, things that you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be who you are today without this industry, without something that you learned from this industry. I think one of my <laughs> biggest learning tools was when was getting past my ego. You know, uh -huh. I think everyone has an ego. Healthy yeah. ego is good. Yeah. Um, but I read a book, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, and it changed my life. And um uh, I is. give I give that book to all the leaders all the time. I mean, I've paid that forward. Um and it's interesting because it has the, the old version has the modern version. So and people some people say, like I was always an avid book reader and i wouldn't switch to audible but because i was traveling a lot and around the ships and everything i started listening to audible a lot and, and i and i think sometimes i think all i can say is that nothing is ever closed like learn every day um and give everyone a voice and always try and um we always have we have um two ears and one mouth so should we listen double to what we talk <laughs> <laughs> so I always like learn all these things, but I think being on a ship when I first went in '96, um, there wasn't even a HR manager on board, uh, nothing, and I didn't have the best um, time. 
at all. And I, and I, I didn't. I went home, and I couldn't find a job. So then I went back. But if I would have found a job, I may never have come back. So I think sometimes to everyone who's listening is don't give things some things a second try because sometimes the first time it doesn't work out. Um, but it just might not be the right people around you. Uh, but learn as much as you can from the people around you. And then you 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 go on with your journey. Maybe that's not your journey at the time. But um that's what I learned. I think I think it's just um just always uh trying to improve an experience, whether it's um for the crew, for the sailor, or or for me and personally. Yeah. No, you're right, Colin. I remember also my first time on a cruise ship. And you know, I, I, I've always had a passion for cruise ships. So you would think that it would be sort of easy for me to transition into working in a, on a cruise ship. But the first the first time was difficult because you, you do adjust to a new environment, to new people, to living differently, to not having your support system, you know, your friends, your family. So it is it is difficult and it, it, it sort of commands tenacity. And like you said, you know, to come back and try again, because then your perception on, on, on the experience is completely different because you've had this background, you've had this experience. And and and, uh, and then you know it's it's then you get hooked to it, right? <laughs> then for for the right reason, obviously. Yeah? And you're right. The 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 environment is is very important because when you're away from your support system, from your family, your friends, you know, well, who you interact with on the ship, they become your friends. You know, in very in in, in many ways. And uh, my best friends, for example, are from the cruise industry. They are from they are people I worked with. Uh, on on ships uh, because you establish bonds of course you have people that you don't necessarily appreciate but you learn to deal with that as well because you still have to live with them for extended period of time so it's 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 a very good way to to accept things you know that don't necessarily go your way and 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 then you have the, the 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 people that you really get along with will become friends i would say friends for life so it is it is a learning experience going right yeah, I agree there. And then you can also travel the world for free because you have friends in every single country. <laughs> I <can't laughs> it's a great address book. It's a great address book. It is. And you, get, book. and you get the tour, the tours. I was looking at, I mean, I go to Manchester all the time to visit my okay. family. And I was looking something in Manchester the other day and it said like $400 for a, a tour of Manchester. I was like, well, maybe I do that when I go back. <laughs> but you get the real tour from the crew all over the world. So I would never change anything. I think cruise ship people, it's a different world. It's like a, it shows a world that you can all get along peacefully together. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, well, it's, a, no. it's, a diver, it's a diverse world for sure, right? When you think about where where the crew is coming from, or even 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 the sailors. Uh, but even for the the younger the younger industry people listening, Colin, what what a great lesson, right? Not not to be afraid of that second try, right? Not you know again, somebody as you said yourself, you wanted to get in at eighteen. They said come back at twenty one. You're still joining an industry at a very young age, right? There's a lot to still be shaped and to learn, and and maybe that first one might be a little bit. A little bit choppy, but then come back to it if, from the passion standpoint and, and give it another try. What a great lesson for 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 younger people listening today. Yeah, because yeah. it's so interesting. Because when you go, like now, you go. Let's say I go to the store and I come home, yeah. I just take my uh, stuff out of the car. But when you go to a ship, it's it's life changing. You know that it's security is there for a reason. But you have to go through the metal detector and you have to go to the cabin. And you can only bring on certain things. And, it's very the first the first uh, contract is like a shock to the system, but what you learn, you know, from all these people from all over the world it, is priceless. It's priceless, and and also having the opportunity. I don't know how many nationalities you have on your ships. On the ships I, I work with, you know, sometimes you have 30, 38 different nationalities. So working with so many different nationalities, each with their own sort of way of living, of perception on life. Is, is something that grows you as a person, as a leader, because you don't manage, you know, people from Asia the same way you manage people from Europe, the same way you manage people from the Americas. So as a leader, you learn a lot, but also as a person, you, you learn tremendously. So that's also the beauty of not just the cruise industry, but the tourism industry at large, you know, that you have the ability to interact with all those people from all over the world, which is the best university. I always say that travel is the best university in some ways, right, Colin? Yeah, I agree, 100%. Um, you learn a lot there. 
And uh, no, no, it's 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 unbelievable. Now, what, what's next for Virgin? I think you you're you're being rather successful. You're you're launching ships. I think you still launched one recently, right? So what's next? So um, we just launched Resilient, which was in April. Um, it did a beautiful season out of Athens in Greece, and now it's um, heading over to Australia. It should be in Singapore in a few days. So that's our first time uh, going to Australia. And uh, that was one of Richard Branson's dreams as well, to take a ship to Australia. Virgin brand is huge there. Um, but of course, um, we have two ships here uh, in, out of um, Miami. And then we have a new ship that's in the making that will come out in 2024 called the, the Brilliant Lady. So, I mean, we're full uh, speed ahead. We've took out... Our, we launched, relaunched after the pandemic in October 21, and now it's only 23. Uh, next year we'll have four ships out. Um, so it's been a, it's been a journey, um, but we're all very proud about what we've done. And what's amazing is that you know when you do get to start like a new company, um, you don't have a loyalty club, etc. So you can create, you know. Um, the loyalty as you're listening to the sailors. So what's been perfect for us, for two years we've been listening to the sailors, listening to the crew on how we can deliver the loyalty. So we have the right foundation because once you put it out in the universe, then that's your loyalty club. It's hard to, to change. So that's another uh, thing that we that, that's coming you know soon uh, and that we're working on uh, closely. So stay tuned for that one. All right, Colin, keep keep changing the industry, keep pushing us, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think that is a good thing. That's why you know I was I was particularly honored to to have Colin today because uh hearing from someone who's at the forefront of literally, literally, I'm not afraid to say it, to change our industry is 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 amazing. You know, it's it's uh it's a very rewarding experience. And Colin, thank you for your time today because I think you know. It's listening to your your stories first of all is is inspiring, and uh, and again you know what we can tell is uh, for those young people that are that are interested you know you said it right Colin it's not about the way you look it's not about whether you have a tattoo or not uh, it's about your passion and I think you know work with your passion and uh, that that will get you pretty far and it's very very refreshing to see a cruise line that understands that you know that values that to the level that you Colin and your colleagues value it so thank you for this and uh you know onwards for changing the industry and uh you're going to be successful I look forward I haven't been on a virgin ship yet <laughs> but I look forward you know to one day being on one I would love to do it and uh to experience what you created because I think it will it will change also, my perception, you know, it's always, you, you mentioned it yourself, you know, you always learn, right? So I'm looking forward to learn by uh, seeing what you create. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And Bertrand, you're welcome anytime. And you, Glenn, and you, you need to come and experience the Scarlet Line, where we have the most epic uh, pool party, the ship turns red. So we'll end it there. But uh, thank you for your time. Yeah, the, Scar the Scarlet Night, which is, uh, again, again, if I may point out, you know, traditionally, Glenn, on, on ships, you have the formal night, you know, you have the captain's uh, evening, right? And they, they forego that and they say, we're going to have the Scarlet Line. They created something completely different in theme. I, I, I look forward to that, Colin. <laughs> so thank you very much. I would like to thank uh, first Glenn and Stelios uh, from One Business World and obviously the One Tourism World platform for giving us the opportunity to, well, first and foremost, share our passion for the cruise industry and also, well, share a few insights. And I think what a wealth of insights we had today. Thanks to Colin. And uh, thank you. Thank you to the audience. And we look forward to having you for further uh, webinars, but also uh, stay tuned for the One Tourism World Conference, which will happen in February 2024. So stay tuned for that. Thank you very much, Colin. Thanks. Thank you both. Colin, Bertrand, another great conversation, another wonderful journey here at One Tourism World. Thank you. Thank you both. Yeah, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Take good care. Thank you, Stella. Bye.